as a byproduct of my fantasy tier ranking video, I've got to make my dystopian tier ranking video because who would I be if I wasn't both sides of the 2014 coin? as many dystopian novels as I've read fantasy novels. I thought there was going to be like an even number but there's clearly a lot more fantasy which makes sense. I do skew a bit more fantasy but I read a lot of dystopians in my day and I guess I just like didn't read as much as like I remember. I think I just probably remembered more like I am number four, I never read that one and so there's a lot like that that I guess sort of just like slipped me by and to be fair there's a lot that I kind of start in and then finish as well so I will get down to that and so my tears are the capital for being you know the best place I guess you could be in the Hunger Games. Then we have the wild in which you know if you escaped and you ran away like Lucy Gray I assume you're in the wild okay I want you to know that I know a lot of my Hunger Games lore including things like the fact that it's called Pan Am and there are the wilds which is sort of like Canada. Canada is like the wild I think and then District 13 ooh, um District 13 which is obviously if you're underground, if you faked your death and you went into the nuclear bunkers, you live in District 13 and that's like, okay. You know, it's not the worst thing, it would be better. District 12, obviously, horrible, horrible place to be. Not great, especially if you live in the seam. If you're poor in District 12, it's, it's over for you, actually. The only way it could truly be over for you if you were in the arena, right? If you were in the Hunger Games and they were killing you to make sport and entertainment. So the first one that I'm going to go for is Diversion. Starting off strong, it's one of the more famous ones. It's definitely the absolute bare bones of this entire genre that was made for YA teens at the time. I think that the first Diversion is a lot stronger than the rest of the series. I think the actual idea of what Diversion was doing in the first series is better than Insurgent or Religion. Also, when we look at the fact that Veronica Roth was only like 19 when this was written slash published, I think she published it like immediately afterwards, that's pretty cool, right? Like if you publish this at 19 or whatever, like early 20s age that she published this at and then got the fame off of that and kind of like piss off, what can you really say? But this was also not very good. So I'm gonna put this in District 13. Like it wasn't good, but it wasn't like the worst thing I've ever read. I might, I might end up putting it a little bit lower because I do remember really, really, really hating Triss at one point and also I really hated Shaylee Woodley like it was it was a burning passionate hatred for that woman I just thought she couldn't act it wasn't really anything personal I just really hated the fact that she was everywhere at the time she was in the spectacular now this the fault in our stars all at the same time and I was like enough I've got to get her off the screen because I, I just remember being like she's not good and the next one is deliriums this was one of the ones that was like we should do surgery on people. It was about taking the love out of you so you didn't feel love and therefore you didn't feel the defects of love and I guess you were able to be oppressed more if you didn't feel love, which I guess makes sense. I guess part of empathy is love and if you don't feel empathy, I guess you can just like stay oppressed. I don't know, they don't really go that much into it in the book either. There's also a really bad love triangle in this. I remember the ending being really unsatisfying, so I'm gonna put it in District 12 because I would never ever touch this again. The Hunger Games. I mean, I'm gonna put it in the capital, which I guess is a bit oxymoronic, but like a very, very, very good book. Good social commentary generally. I guess it's like, social commentary is very important to this genre, right? Because that's the whole idea of this like oppressive state. Um, I do have to say, you know, most of these have like white protagonists who are being subjugated, which is, always so much fun to see considering the state of the world you know what if we spoke about the political and social state of the world as Jane Smith said and then all of the white writers that wrote these were like what if we didn't though what if we made up our own world to oppress us but anyway the Hunger Games still reigns supreme there's a lot of sort of social commentary in there that's like actually good the stuff about you know District 7 generally has an idea of race within it um, obviously just like everything else, everything else. The idea of violence and bombing and control and the way in which the Hunger Games is used as control is very well written. I think the only thing with the Hunger Games I don't particularly like is the way in which I think kind of like the beginning of Mockingjay plays out. I think it's very long and I don't think it's like earned. Like I don't think it's like long in a way that like fully ends with the way it does. I think that book should have probably been a bit longer. I think that book deserved to be around like 500, 600 pages and it wasn't I guess to fit with the YA idea at the time because remember like this was like one of the pioneers of YA and that I think made them feel like 
this age group wouldn't read that much I think whereas you know some of the other books in even in here are written longer just because YA had become more popular so this I think definitely with Mockingjade deserved a more more the darkest minds the darkest minds did pretty well for what it was i liked it it was very much like an x-men situation where there was like tears but there's only like certain types of powers that you could have and they were all like color coded so there was like greens and reds and blues and whatnot and that's how you sort of differentiated your powers i liked this i remember reading it and this was a really good found family story and for that alone i was very much hooked i remember this also had a really bad ending i remember there was a lot of miscommunication in the third book and the couple in this because obviously this has a romantic subplot as they all do was really good and i didn't like what they did to them in this book like it was very annoying but i'm gonna put this in the wild because i did think it was really interesting and it had me hooked for most of it legend i think to this day legend is one of those books where if you were asked what should I give my 13 year old or as a 13 year old what you should read. Legend is up there, Legend is very very good, it's very interesting and it had a good premise, it was about like passing a test so that you could get essentially like a good like a good life, you would have to pass a test to do better but like if you lived in a richer part of town you would be able to do better because you had to like better schools and stuff and generally just like the whole idea was very good I remember the like, main characters being very well characterised and there was also like prison scenes, there was a lot about being locked up and escaping and heisting and stuff. So that was definitely my wheelhouse at the time and I didn't remember the ending of the last book really pissing me off but regardless it was pretty good so I'm gonna put this also in the wilds because I had a good time reading this. Cinder. Cinder is the like absolute pinnacle in my opinion of dystopian fiction. It was a fairy tale retelling of all of the stories within a dystopian setting. So the first one was about Cinderella and we have Rapunzel, oh no we have Scarlet which is Red Riding Hood and then we have Rapunzel and then we have Snow White and all of them are really good. I like the idea of it there was a good premise and Cinder ends up essentially like getting with the prince which is pretty cool and she's like lying to him and she finds out all these things about like being a cyborg because she has these parts that are metal and that makes her like lesser than so cyborgs are seen as lesser than and that was an interesting idea considering like AI and robots were something that was like a thing back then and I don't really know anything about like body modifications which is like honestly something that's been around for a very long time but I was like not aware of that you can just have a leg that's metal and that was made to be like a wilder thing in this book that I would say it is considering at the time I didn't know that this was really common but now that I do I'm like why did they make such a big deal out of the fact that she had a metal leg like okay so did many people the entire story of how they like bring down the government and they go to the moon at one point which is pretty cool and I just remember really good liking it I think the writing was good the characters were good the story was really really interesting, like wrapped up really well, There's, they had like an epilogue story, it was like a novella that you had to read, this was good, like I respected this for what it was. The next thing being Paper Girls, this was one that I read when I was a bit older, so I read this during Covid and I was just like bed rotting to hell and it was like during this time where like my university was like not telling me what we were gonna do, we had like no classes, we had no like idea of what was going to happen with Covid, it was like no vaccine and it was just me in my bed reading this, so I honestly can't remember so much of what this is about, but essentially it's about these girls who are paper girls, so they do paper rounds and they are like in the 80s, very much like Strange Things vibes, and then they get like sucked into this like time heist and they have to go and save this dystopian future from happening, which is going to happen like soon in their like 80s world, and they have to stop it from happening by like going through time and like saving the world, and that was really sick. And this is written by the same person who writes Saga, which is another incredible graphic novel, so this is a graphic novel, and just amazing, it was like very interesting at the time. I remember this being very very good and very well written and really entertaining, but I also can't remember it. So I can't put it in the capital because I can't remember like large swathes of it. So I'm gonna have to put it in like the wild, but I'm gonna put it at the top of the wilds because I think it was very good, but I just can't remember exactly why I thought it was really good. The next one being The Giver. So they, I remember reading this when the movie came out. So the movie came out in like 2014 or 2015, I can't remember exactly. And the guy who plays Nightwing in Titans plays the main character and Taylor Swift is in this movie. And so is Meryl Streep. And somebody else really famous is in that movie as well and it was just like a really big deal and I just remember it kind of bombing but I don't think it did, I think it like kind of just about made its money back, it was just like a big deal when this movie came out, it came around the same time as like 
the second Divergent movie, I think. So there was a lot of dystopian hype at the time, but this movie was also kind of bad. I remember it like not really following the book and that being kind of something that people really hated. I like this story. I think the idea of The Giver is very intriguing. It's obviously one of the more OG YA dystopians. So for that, it's gonna go at the top of District 13. I just don't remember loving it. I just don't care about the main character, which is like kind of the point, you know, everyone's a bit of a flat grey character in this world, but like that doesn't mean I have to like it just because it's on purpose. But yeah, that's all I have to say about the giver for now. And the next one I have is Want. This was like a random standalone that I read. It was about the fact that air was something that you had to buy. And now, honestly, I wouldn't put it past them. Like during COVID, it really looked like we might have to start buying air. So <laughs> this was looking more and more like an actual thing. It was one of those like climate change, global warming is coming. It was less about like an oppressive government that's like super different from our own. It was much more like climate warming is happening and we've got to stop it unless we want to end up like these people who have to pay for their air and like they've like they had like these suits and then they have to like, get air like pumped through them. Very much like the Lorax vibes, I think. I don't remember the book being very good though. Like I don't remember like this book being very interesting. I think like the writing was kind of bad, like kind of mediocre, very much like there wasn't a lot of good world building going on. I think since I guess this idea has been done before, you know, people could follow along pretty well. So there wasn't really anything that I think was super unique to this story specifically that I think was worth telling. So I'm gonna put it in District 12 because I have to remember being like, it's interesting. It was like an Asian protagonist in this world but there wasn't much like interesting social commentary other than, you know, global warming is coming and we need to probably be more prepared for this and the government is oppressive. And I think there could have been more commentary on the fact that I think the government will be more and more stringent about climate change. And like when climate change becomes a real big problem, there will be like lots of restrictions on people like buying air and not having enough water because that's gonna become a problem very soon and things like will you be able to go outside i think shit like that is going to become really important like they're going to put lockdowns and stuff like that that we can't control and those types of things could have been more discussed in this book i think the next one is another standalone and that is ready player one ready player one obviously very well known steven spielberg movie great you know whatever i don't really love that movie the book i remember liking but like not loving i remember it took me a whole summer to read this like i remember i started reading and I didn't finish until the end of the summer, like literally like the day before I went back to school. So I don't know what that says, like it put me in a slump, I guess. Mm. But I do remember like the idea of this being really sick. Like it was such a promising idea that I have to put it in like the wild. I really thought it was cool when I was reading it. I remember the main character being annoying and the writing for the girl being kind of... Ugh but I'm gonna put it up there anyway. I think I might have to, should I put it in District 13? Maybe that's where it deserves to be, but I think I'm gonna put it in the wilds. We'll see, we'll see. The next one being The Fifth Wave. This was another big dystopian one. Again, another one that got a movie, which is interesting. Like lots of these randomly got a movie, like kind of quickly by like 2017. Like they were turning these out, like they would buy the rights in like 2014 and they would like get the movie out in like 2017. But then that was sort of like the fading end of this like genre. So they were not catching the right people. Anyway, The Fifth Wave. I remember this book being good. I remember really liking the split narratives between the characters because we see two dual POVs. I liked the fact that this was a like kind of dystopian alien world. Like now that I think about it, I'm like, I don't know if it should be on here. Like I think it perhaps is more of like an alien book. I think that's a spoiler, isn't it? But I don't know, is it a spoiler? Kind of. But like at the beginning it feels like a natural disaster vibe and then it feels very dystopian because of the world and the way that like it becomes very militaristic and that feels very dystopian. But then there's also like a massive alien element to this world. But I remember the first book being pretty good. The second book also being okay. I don't think I ever read the third one, so I'm gonna put this in District 13 because I remember finding it pretty entertaining. I might put it at the font, but again, I never finished this. So I remember like people not liking the ending and that's why I didn't finish it. Had a pretty unique premise from what I'd read and from what was around for YA fiction. There's probably lots of 
stories like this in adult fiction, but I'm just like not aware of them even to this day, so what can I say? The next one is The Selection. This is obviously like an absolute founding mother of these worlds. This is basically The Bachelor, but essentially for the king, and the king runs this world, and there's like oppression depending on like where you live, I think and that was a whole thing and I remember the main character being really really annoying and the main guy was like being abused by his dad those were the main things I took away from this and that America singer sings and I remember I think she also played the violin I can't remember but there was something super annoying about her aside from the fact that her name was America but whatever which is also odd because it was like I don't think the country they live in is called America it's called something else I also even read the spin-off series. I actually didn't finish it, but you know what? I read far too much of the selection. I think I just liked the Bachelor-esque idea. But obviously in this, we're seeing it from the contestant and then in the spin-off, we see it from the person picking. But then it's like, why would we keep the selection going if we've ended subjugation and oppression? Like, what was the point of the new king being installed? And I'm like, so there's still a king. We still have a monarchy after all of this what did we learn? Nothing. Okay, District 12. No, this is going in the arena. Like, this was truly ridiculous. But I remember it being, like, a really fun read, though. Like, I don't know if I should put it in the arena, because it wasn't, like, absolute garbage. Maybe District 12 is where it is. Because I remember, like, actually finishing the series, reading the spin-offs, hating America, but liking the ideas of, you know, The Bachelor. Like, that's very saucy and very, like, upbeat, you know? It's very catty and soapy in a way that I guess a lot of these aren't because they're like really serious whereas like this was a bit like this is one for the girls you know you guys you guys can have this which was fun the next one being the maze runner okay my most controversial opinion about the maze runner is that it should have been a duology okay we should have been in the maze the whole time like the maze should have been a big thing with the maze runner I don't think the scorch trials should have happened I think we should have gone from the maze runner to essentially what the death cure was which was like taking out the government the soul flares are like coming and we've got to like save ourselves from the plague because I thought those plague and the epidemic ideas were all really cool and the fact that they were in the maze to like try out trials for like vaccines to see if people would be able to survive those things were really really interesting and I just think that they should have spent more time cultivating what the maze and what the maze was for much more than what they did like the scorch trials were just so boring and like the love triangle was so contrite like I just think the Maze Runner and a lot of the world they were like building was so interesting especially with like the whole like we can't trust Wicked is Wicked good or bad and like because you know when you are in the government and you look at all of the governments we have today yeah like they are kind of the worst so why would you trust them that is like an interesting thing to play on but here they just don't do it well enough so I'm gonna have to put it in District 13. I think I'm only putting it in District 13 because Divergent is in District 13. Maybe Divergent should be lower, but we'll, we'll keep it in there. We'll keep it in there. The next one being The 100. I did not read The 100. I only watched The 100, but I'm going to put it on there anyway because The 100 was so important to me as a child. Like I, when I was growing up, loved The 100. Like me and my friends who watched The 100 had a separate group chat outside of our other friends to just talk about the 100 because whenever the episodes would come out because it was like one of those like every week airing and had like 20 episodes kind of vibe of shows from the CW because rest in peace those used to exist this was excellent television for teens you know there was such high stakes so much tension every character was being introduced in the most excellent way and then we get to like season two and there's still so much going on we're like getting more stakes from like places we didn't expect to see and then we get to season three and there's like such a big villain and we're like whoa where did this come from oh my god and there's like relationships now that we were like oh my god we're rooting for this we want this to happen and then season four happened and we're like oh okay um and we like sort of like go through season four and we're like okay whatever and then like season five and we're like okay we've got to stop watching this and we didn't we pretty much watched all of it like i watched it all the way up until like halfway through the last season like i watched too much of it like far far too much of the 100 but for the first three seasons being absolute excellence i'm gonna have to put it in district 13 like just incredible storytelling until you know they decided to go off the fucking rails i just don't understand why the cw when they have something that's a winner decides to be like what if this was a loser 
What if we made people actually hate us by the time that we end this show? Anyway, the next four are ones that I never finished. So the first one is Warcross. So this is written by the same person who wrote Legend, which obviously is in the wild, pretty high up. This I remember loving. I remember really wanting to read this. So I like bought an ebook of it so I could have it immediately. And that's kind of where my ebook thing comes from, from Warcross. I never really used to read proper like ebooks until this point. Like I wasn't like buying and keeping them. Whereas this was the one. However, I never read the last one because I think I had to wait for it to come out. And by that point I didn't care. Plus that one didn't really get good reviews. End of this book. And so I was like, mm, I don't like where this is going as well for the next book. And I just sort of gave up on it. But for this book alone, we're putting it in District 13. Like I think even if I finished the second book, I think the fact that this book was so good in my eyes, it would have kept it to District 13. This was about like gaming. And like the world essentially being controlled by whatever like Elon Musk is trying to create like that Neuralink thing and that like working out but it was being made by like this gaming company because like gaming was really big. It was sort of like if you know like the World Cup but it was like the gaming World Cup as in like the football doesn't exist, gaming is like the biggest thing. The next one is Shaz. This is a kind of again another X-Men kind of vibe where like the main character like no one can touch her but again i already finished the first book so i never even got to like the more interesting books because people really like the relationship this is one of the ones where again it's like the girls really like this because the romantic subplot in this is like apparently really interesting but i never got to the point where like it became interesting like by the end of the first book we don't actually see that romance bloom we just sort of see like betrayal and the world being like unraveled but it, it was very much like boring like at the end of this they kind of go to the, like what is essentially like Xavier's like childhood school thing and it just it wasn't very good. I'm gonna put this in the arena because again I never finished this because I didn't like it. I remember also a lot of people really like this writing style and I remember being like this is so pretentious and shit. Like it's so flowery that it was like detracting from the story and I know part of it was just because a lot of the other books in this drama were not like that so me reading this and it being like supremely like poemy and I was like enough like no one talks like this I, I understand what you're going for but I hate this so I never finished because I was like I can't deal with that either the next thing is matched I only read the first one again from this because it was not very good but this was essentially like okay to read only because I really like the idea that handwriting was gonna go out of like fashion like the idea of writing with pen and paper was like not a thing anymore and that's what this kind of discovers and understands is like if we keep typing we might not need handwriting and somebody like teaches the main character to handwrite because it's like not a thing it's like illegal here and why it's called matched is because everyone gets matched to get married she's like oh but i didn't get matched with the guy i want to marry and, da -da -da -da. and she's like i'm different i'm not like the other girls and I like writing. I think the writing thing is much more compelling and therefore that should have been what made her rebel aside from this. Like, she just wanna get married to the person she's supposed to get married to. But like the writing thing and actually wanting to be able to write and see and form things with your own hands was something that was just like not allowed in this world and she wanted to do it. So I was like, why would this not be the bigger issue? The guy she wants to leave, the person she's matched with is also so annoying. Like he's the one who teaches her to write, which is why like she's a rebel and in love and like she likes writing, but at the same time, so, so deeply unserious. And the last one is The Young Elites. This again is written by the same person who wrote both Warcross and Legend. I guess she really liked this genre and really kept writing in it. She's kind of prolific, but I never liked this one. This again, this again is an X-Men story. What was going on that they were like, we need more. We've got all of these. Why don't I write one? Because she was the last one, I think, to write one of these. So like, by the time that Legend had finished, she started writing The Young Elites. But at that point, Shatter Me was already out. Darkest Minds was already out. I don't know why she decided to write this. It was so odd. But again, this was also going in the arena because I did not like this. I remember just being like, this is really boring. Like she wrote Warcross after she finished the series with the Young Elites. And I remember being like, oh, finally she's done with that. So she can write better things. So I was like really excited to see her write other things. But the Young Elites, ew, why would anyone read that? That was just so boring. I remember the main character being like obsessed with her mum. I think her mum died. And then we kept getting like flashbacks to her mum. 
I don't know if I'm making that up, but I just remember kind of that being a big part of it and I didn't like that. That is my ranking. That's my definitive ranking. Is it my definitive ranking? Let's see. The Capital only has The Hunger Games and Cinder. I think Paper Girls is going to go up there. I think I did really like that. The Darkest Minds, yep. And Legend and Ready Player One being on there, that's, that's valid, I think. The Fifth Wave, The Giver, The Divergent, The Hun... This is where I'm like, hmm. I think Warcross should probably be before Diversion. I think Diversion maybe needs to come down, but I really liked reading Diversion. Like I was really young when I read Diversion, like I was like 12. So I think that also clouds it. Like I've not read Diversion since. The 100 is on there because of the good seasons and the Maze Runner is on there because of what could be and what was. The first book is good in the Maze Runner and I think it's better than Diversion's first book. So I think maybe that should be a little over the side. Mm. Diversion, I think Diversion is like not very good though. Like it really isn't, like especially Allegiant is just like not good. Like the entire book is so convoluted. Like by the time it gets to Allegiant, like we're like, oh, and then there's like this person's mom and they're like this and everyone's like, oh, actually she's really important. The main character is so important. Isn't she so different and Divergent? She's not Dauntless. Oh my God, she's a full rounded human being. Actually, yeah, that used to really piss me off. Hated that. Hate it when people were too special for their own boots for no reason. Can we at least give them a reason for being special? Like being special is good, but like, why are they special? Do they have an interest? Are they skilled at something? Did they learn something? Have they in the right place at the right time to figure something out? No, they just have like powers. And the power here was being a normal person. Like, do you understand how ridiculous that is? And, oh my God, at the end of this book, they just like reset the world, don't they? They're just like, oh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be free from oppression. <laughs> yeah, Diversion, fuck Diversion. That definitely deserves to be in District 12. Oh my God, Allegiant was so bad. Allegiant was terrible. Oh my God, how bad was Allegiant? My God, truly deserves all of the hate that it's gotten over the years. Just bad. Bad, 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 bad. Anyway, I guess it skews a little bit more negatively, but like, there's like three in both of the top two sections. So you could be in the wilds and running away, or you can be in the capital living lavish. So we have this definitive rank. I think I have a very sort of non-distributive rank. I am also kind of ranking with like nostalgia on the brain. So that's definitely skewing some of these, but that's all I have for today. Hope you like this. Tell me if you think my decisions make sense to you or if they don't and if you liked any of these books because some of them I'm like wow I really spent my time reading all of these. That's a really good time well spent for me when I was like 15 years old but then again I was like what all else was? But then again what else was I doing? I wasn't going outside. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Like if you like the video and subscribe if you want to watch some of my other videos. I have videos on books, videos on TV, videos doing book reviews. So if any of those things make you interested, or hang around and watch the video that will appear on screen at some point. I don't know when, but it will appear. Promise.